Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trisha's Talk Podcast. I am Trisha, your favorite host, the one of a kind. <laughs> welcome back to episode number eight, if I remember correctly. And this episode will be all about not having sex. <laughs> it has been over a year um, since the last time that I had sex. I know, hard to believe especially as an adult content creator um, and pleasure toy reviewer. When I say it has been over a year that I had sex, people are just like, really? Like, what? <laughs> so I thought this is definitely worth an episode. Um, also to inspire and empower, because this is what my podcast is all about, to inspire and empower others on their journey. I'm not saying you all need to stop having sex for a year, but for myself, for my personal experience, it has been a really great experience, something that I needed to do, um, which I will get into why it has been beneficial for me. So the last time that I've been intimate with another person is about 17 months ago, and that was on date four. And then after that, I thought like, oh, it's not working. The dating, I'm not ready yet. Um, and then funny enough, two months after that, I started to get into the adult content uh, creation world, so started my own business in this direction. Um, and I was busy getting this set up. Um, and then I had to move or I wanted to move from where I was on the south side of Brisbane up to the north side of Brisbane. And I was just new to Brisbane in general. Um, from South Australia. And when I moved up um, to the north side of Brisbane, I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to give it another go. And that was last year. So I went, I think, on a few dates with four different guys. Still seems to be easier to go on a date with a guy than with a woman. Um, so it was, yeah, I think it was four different guys. And Funny enough, when I'm just thinking about it, it always stopped on day two. <laughs> um, yeah, really interesting. So the first date, um, obviously, when you just catch up and you get a good vibe, you're like, all right, you're going to meet a second time. And when I just think about it, all four of them for the second time invited me to their home. <laughs> and it always stopped there. One of them invited me to his home and I got there and there was no effort made at all. Um, I don't think he made his hair. He didn't put any shoes on and it was a dark house. I love fresh air. I love sunshine. I love daylight. And it's really odd. Some Australians are keeping themselves pretty much in the dark and like all the curtains are closed. And I'm just like, this is really depressing. Um, and yeah, really quickly, my movement from like, exciting about that day to like yeah now we're not gonna like work out <laughs> and as I progressed I was just like yo I'm gonna go and I don't think that's gonna work out um another one he was nice he was fine just wasn't feeling it um the other one invited me to his house and <laughs> um he did put in some effort he cooked um unfortunately didn't provide any carbs I'm actually sidetracking here, I'm talking about dating again, but we're getting into the story. Um, I have made no plan about this podcast. I just said, let's talk about me not having sex for over a year. And I hope this podcast and my story will inspire and empower someone else. Um, so just bear with me. We will see where this podcast is going to end up and what kind of stories are going to come out of here. But yeah, um, he was putting in a little bit more effort. Um, he cooked, um, there were no carbs, so, and I'm just like, okay. Um, and then while the meal then was ready um, and we sat down, it was an, on the couch and put on Netflix for a movie on the second day. I'm like, um, okay, are we not going to like get to know each other? I have a chat. And that was awkward. And then while I was like almost done eating, still hungry because it had no carbs on it, <laughs> um, he just put his arm around me. And when I like turned, just kissed me like out of nowhere. I wasn't even like, you know, giving any signs for it. 
Um, and yeah, that made me pretty uncomfortable and basically really run away. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, I think I'm going to order myself an, an Uber now and I'm out of here. <laughs> that was my first and only time so far that I also called an Uber because I just wanted to get out of there and I had no idea how to do that. It was an experience. That is for sure. Um, and the other one, the fourth guy, um, got to the house and I thought, oh yeah, some good vibes coming across. Um, also made like a little bit of an effort, but not really. We just said, oh yeah, come over and I'm going to cook something. And then I got there, are you actually really hungry? Because if you're not, like, I'm not going to cook anything. And I'm like, mm, okay. And yeah, do you want to have a drink? And I'm like, well, I'm still driving. But yeah, maybe one. So I had one drink I'm sitting on the couch. And I'm just like, okay. Um, and then I was sort of like, oh yeah, let's have a conversation. Let's get to know each other. So I'm like, oh yeah. And because... I'm obviously working in the adult industry, um, pleasure toy reviews, and I'm very open-minded. So I'm also like checking in, um, getting to know that other person sexually. And I'm like, oh, what have you experienced? Like where you're at, what's your dynamic, and maybe like what you're like. And he's like, are we all going to talk about that? And I'm like, um, yeah, why not? Why shouldn't we talk about it? Um, how about we just do it? And I'm like, well, <laughs> I like to have chats <laughs> and get to know each other um communicate you know it's really important and he's like well you are the first one and it's really odd for me that you like to talk about sex before actually having sex isn't it about like just having sex getting to know each other while we're doing it and I'm like mm, okay I don't think we're gonna get along here so um and we both agreed and looked at each other and we're like yeah no I don't think it's working so we both said it at the same time and I'm just like okay going which really like just made me realize I went on four different guy dates and the second date always like was an invitation to their house maybe they thought because I'm working in the adult industry that I'm just like all right let's just have sex on the second day like all right it's cool the vibe is good on the first one let's invite her home and we're just gonna go for it and so um yeah and I think after that um I had the kids full time again as well and lots of things changed um, and I just said, like, you know what? I don't think it's actually working. So it was like, take a step back again. But yeah, so from that 17 months ago, where I was on date four and it didn't work out, and then I tried a couple more dates as you've just heard, and then that didn't work out, I just decided, like, all right, that's it. Um, I've got the kids at the moment full time anyway. Um, I've got my business, my own business. I'm just going to put like lots of work in that. Um, and then that's when I started to really get into the pleasure um, toy reviews as well. So I really put much more time and effort into that and took a step back of having sex or looking for a day to um, be satisfied in this direction. And here's the thing. Taking a step back sometimes or having a good break can help you to get a bit of a better perspective to things, similar to um, attachments. So that is a whole topic that I could make another episode on, is attachments. For example, um, last month in March, I did a dry March. So I completely stopped drinking alcohol just because... I wasn't drinking um, to get hungover, to get drunk or anything like that, but I had this sneaky glass of wine um, here and there before bed. And I'm like, do I really need that? Like, why am I having that? And it just kind of like became almost a habit. And I realized like, mm, I don't like that habit. So we're just going to stop that. And it was really good to just have that complete break from it and knowing, oh, that was a habit because I'm not even missing it. So the first week was a bit odd because it was a habit. But after that, it was like, yeah, cool, no worries. So moving forward, I know this helped me now to work on the relationship with alcohol, where this here <clears throat> helped me to work on the relationship I have with sex. And looking back to prior to the dates, um, once... Um, before that, I went on different journeys. So I was um, going on some swinger parties, checked out the kinky uh, scenes, the BDSM scenes, 
and I was exploring a lot more, but I also had like a friend with benefit before I came here up to Brisbane and I realized I can't, or I had also some with just like casual sex, no strings attached and all these things did not work for me. Um, which is all great lessons to learn for myself to know, oh, okay, this works for me, this doesn't work for me, this works for me, this doesn't work for me. Now knowing I really need that connection with someone. I need that connection because that gives me the satisfaction. So I'm not just the physical. I need also that emotional connection. I need that energy exchange and to feel safe comfortable or respected I need to know that person a little bit and I can't know someone by just like oh hey hi let's do it so (laughs) then I can't let myself fully go and also looking back I really gave the responsibility of my pleasure I put that into the hands of someone else I kind of like expected okay when we get together um I'm gonna get like the the responsibility of the pleasure I put it into someone else's hand where now taking that step back not having sex with someone else but just with myself and with my pleasure toys <laughs> don't even pleasure toys gave me the opportunity to get to know myself in a safe way safe environment safe person I feel safe I feel respected and then to try things out to experiment to explore and I have explored ways and done things now where I'm like, oh, hang on a second. So this is what I like and this is what I'm not like. This is what turns me on. This is the way I like it. And like, whoa, I haven't experienced that before. Whoa, I can do that to myself. Whoa. And now knowing all of that ultimately will help me moving forward when I go into new relationships that I can actually communicate what are my likes, how do I like to be pleased, um, and what are my boundaries, where are my limits, and now being more confident in myself, more confident in my own body, I can communicate that more confidently to my future partners, and knowing that they are an assistant to my own pleasures, and that I can be an assistant to their pleasures. So also now knowing that I can be a little bit more open-minded and knowing I can provide more pleasures and listen more and knowing, okay, what can I do to help you to receive all these pleasures? And I've also realized um, I was really good in giving but really bad in receiving pleasure. So that was something that I've realized now for myself as well. Um, Being with someone prior who said like, oh, you're really hard to get um, to, to get to orgasm. You're really hard to make you come. And then being with someone for a few years who's telling you that, then you're kind of like, oh, okay, so this is how it's going to work. Like, I'm just not going to get an orgasm with you. You're just going to have to do it myself to um, experience that. And I just put that up as like, oh, yeah, I'm just someone who's hard to make to come. And then moving after I separated from that person and had a date with someone else, and like when it came closer to being intimate, I'm like, um, just letting you know, like I'm, I'm really difficult to, to get to orgasm. So it's going to take some time. And they're like, oh, okay. And just telling that myself makes it like that, which is not. And so just like, These little things of now knowing how do I like to receive pleasure, I'm now more able to actually communicate that to someone and be like, this is how I like it and how about we're going to do it this way. And um, it's not walking in there like, hey, I'm hard to come. (laughs) So it just changed a lot for me and I really needed that good long break to also not – use sex to feel something or to like fill a gap and just really take that time to get to know myself the same way when you're being single um i recently was on a speed dating event that i want a ticket to 
with women, yes, it was 14 women. Um, it was very interesting. And there were some basic questions that we we're going to ask each other. One of the questions was, what has being single taught you? And when we talked about that, we realized a lot. Like a lot has, like being single can teach you so, so much because you are learning to be with yourself. You're learning to enjoy your own company. You're learning more about yourself because you're just present with yourself. You don't have that interruption of someone else being influenced by someone else. So exploring yourself, that's why self-pleasure can be so super beneficial for your body image, body confidence, for your self-love because you are spending time with yourself. You are, you know, you are safe with yourself. It's a healthy way of exploring and that will increase your confidence. And you learn just so much more about yourself that you can then pass on to others that you are getting involved with. So being single has taught me a lot. And now just being over here myself and enjoying the world of pleasure toys has taught me a lot about myself and my body and helped me to connect with my body. So, um, a pleasure toy for that because I do get the comments like, oh, you don't need a man then, or that's why you don't have a man. And um, it's, I am opening up again to date people and not just pleasure toys. And as you've just heard, I was on a speed dating event. I won a ticket to that one here in Brisbane and it was 14 women and it was my first speed dating um, experience and then with 14 women, it was amazing. That energy there was, wow, especially because women are just like so, I find them so extremely powerful, empowering, vulnerable, um, soft, gentle, but also that strength that comes across because we've all experienced something, learned something, and we are like, we women like to share that and pass it on. So it's just like it was a room full of amazing energy and everyone beautiful in their way. So it was really great. So I'm opening myself up to that again because obviously pleasure toys, they can't um, have that energy exchange. And I love, I love kissing. I love that connection with a human being, that energy exchange. I love um, sensation play. And there's just... So much that pleasure toys and solo self-pleasure obviously can't give me. So I'm opening up again. Plus, I do have some kids three times coming up now. And I want to, yeah, go out and explore a little bit more and see now also where is it going to take me with having that step now that I had that perspective of taking a step back and having that big break. Now moving forward with knowing what I know now about myself and my own body, how's it going to go? Like, very interested in that and being able to communicate more and knowing already what my likes are, my turn-ons, and, yeah, just, like, very keen on that. So stay tuned for this. I might share when um, that journey continues. Trisha's Talk podcast is all about inspiring and empowering, and I hope that this story is inspiring or empowering someone else to maybe take that break as well, especially when you know you're using sex to fill a void, to deal with something where you know you should actually do it in a different way, when you know it might be a bad coping strategy, when you know you're maybe getting involved in someone or something where you know it's not in a healthy way. Sometimes, same like alcohol, uh, sugar, energy drinks, like things like that, can become an attachment and the attachment that's why i said i can make a whole episode on that one as well is something when you are giving that object person act behavior pattern whatever the power of thinking ah oh, this is what's going to make me happy and you're going to go back for that because you want to feel that dopamine kick spike um, I want to feel happy again. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And sometimes you're going to get really attached to it. And this is when it's really important sometimes to really detach, get a healthier relationship with it, to then move forward in a healthier way. And as I said, it can be food, uh, drinks, alcohol, drugs, sex. 
all the attachments, um, which I might make another episode on that one. But I hope this uh, was an inspiring, empowering insight of Trisha's life. I will keep it all coming. <laughs> also, if you have uh, watched this episode, please leave a comment on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. If you've listened to this podcast episode, you can also leave a rate, a review on Spotify. Don't forget to follow it. And I will hear you at one of my next episodes. Bye for now. Mm -hmm. With love, Trisha.